Oh, it is four oh five. If you're here, you're here, and if you're not, too fucking bad. Also, you can swear. Oh, really? Yes. On YouTube, get it all out. Really? We're already demonetized on everything anyway, so <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I never swear, so it's not an issue. What? Nothing. Um. So three, two, one. Hello. Oh, sure. Yeah. Three, two, one. Hello. hello. Welcome back to what's safe word? I'm Amp. I'm Miss Christopher. And today, we are live. Streaming. We, uh, we are alive. Yes. We are living. We are hashtag actually living. Um, and there's no editing going on, so all these jokes and puns are going to be real. <sighs> so you'll see how quick he really is and how slow I am. <laughs> you, were saying, you were thinking it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I would never jump to conclusions so quickly. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we go. Put off. Here, I'll jump off the chair. No. Eight. <laughs> so we're starting with Folsom? So, welcome back to What's a Safe Word. Um, for those of you just joining in, we are... No, it's not a cookie jar. People are... You can read comments, by the way. We are live, so we are going to be a little distracted. There's going to be some ADD going on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not... That doesn't stand for, like, Amp Daddy Disorder or something like that. And I'm wearing my glasses because otherwise I can't read these things. <laughs> just... I'm a daddy. So if you see the glare of the porn on my screen, I apologize. <laughs> There's just so much of it. So much porn on this We're screen. actually not even reading the comments. We're just watching a porn. I am. I'm watching the... Oh. Um, so, this first little chunk... <laughs> Someone said my Tumblr indicates that your clean mouth is a lie. Thanks, Justin. So we will be reading comments as we go, but we're going to treat this first chunk as just kind of a, an update for what we've been through the last couple weeks. Um, just kind of our lives in general. <clears throat> sure. Sex-related things. Kind of like a culture events sort of thing. Well, and the biggest one is Folsom. Correct. Right? Yes. And um, I went to both of them. I went to Folsom Europe in Berlin, uh, two weeks prior to Folsom here in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and they're vastly different fairs. Um, but let's talk about San Francisco, because we both went to that one. Sure. So, what was your thoughts on it? So, Folsom for me started about a week and a half ago. <laughs> um, I, miss, I work at Mr. S, and you guys are somewhat familiar, I'm sure, with Mr. S. Uh, and so... We were getting ready. We were making banners and signs. I you were going for my nipple. I didn't yes. know what you were doing. <laughs> right here, Stop. Mr. S. <laughs> anyway, um, it was the breast, and we had a really good time. We prep. We get gear ready. Uh, I'm doing social media, editing videos, and so we were just in it. And I had no time to film last week or this week. Uh, and then Folsom happened, and for us, Folsom, the store is crazy it's crazy how many people friday and saturday night uh the store was just packed it was like a bar it was so packed <clears throat> but Saw lots of you guys there yeah and there were plenty of people coming up being very nice if you guys were at Folsom and you're in chat thank you um where's bolt oh that is actually a good question so bolt's obviously not here he's in seattle uh we, we'll answer more questions later but he bolt can't be everywhere He's not that quick. He's not that quick. <laughs> um, but Bolt will be on as well when he's he's coming to town here soon, and so we'll definitely do one of these when he's in town. Anyway, Folsom. Yes. Um, so we were working the store. We were on the floor. <clears throat> we were upstairs in like the dungeon space, getting stuff ready. Uh, and then we actually had the fair, which is on the Sunday, and we worked the booth a little bit out in the sun. We said hi. It was a lot of fun. This year, the weather was great. I mean, it wasn't too hot. It was perfect fair weather, um, and it was packed. And I've been doing Folsom for 20-plus years, I think. Um, you've three or four? I've gone about five years now. Five. Okay. Uh, it is like Macy's on Christmas Eve. So how do you think the fair has evolved in the short time that you've been going to, and what do you think of it now? Um. So I think that recently... In the last couple of years specifically, it's definitely become a little more, more mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more booths. There's a whole lot more people. And the crowd and the culture has changed just a bit. Um, and I have nothing against straight people. I think straight people should be having just as much kink sex as gay people. But the crowds used to be super, super gay. Mm -hmm. um, like biker themed. <clears throat> and I agree with you, but I don't think it was necessarily the straight people. I think it is now becoming such a street fair where it used to be a fetish fair and everyone would dress up uh, in fetish outfits. I saw so many shorts and sneakers and just everyday wear that you would see going to a park. Mm -hmm. So more onlookers than participants in mm -hmm. my book 
And for me, that kind of takes away the specialness of a fetish fair. Sure. And to be clear, someone was asking in comments, like, how do people know what Folsom is? Oh. Um, we've done an episode in the past, uh, like the safety and kind of guidelines of Folsom, like how to have a good Folsom. Folsom is a street fair that started back in the 70s, I think, mm-hmm. or 80s. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to ask Race. <laughs> we we have details in that video. But it, strangely, it didn't start as a fetish fair no. either. It so evolved into that. It started as a kind of a march against gentrification in Soma, which is a district here in San Francisco. South of Market. Yeah. And so it started with the bikers and the bars and the drag queens and all those people that were trying to fight that gentrification. And then quickly... Because all the leather bars were in that neighborhood, Mm -hmm. it became more of a leather fetish fair. But now I see it swinging back the other way. And because fetish has gotten so big to include so many different kinks that it's no longer just leather and latex, it is now lots of costuming, lots of colors, lots of... So it's almost becoming like a carnival uh, to me, that's I, I, I sure. noticed going through the pictures that, for Mr. S that we took at our booth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> people had lots of feathers and fancy hats and things that aren't necessarily what we would think of as leather and fetish. Uh, but people are still having fun, and it's all encompassing. Everyone's having a good time. Fetish in that way, and Helios says it started in 1984. Thank you for that detail. 94, really? 84. Oh, 84. I was going to say, I was here in 92. Okay, (laughs) I'll agree with that. (laughs) Um, But back to your point, I think that that fetish and kink is about expression, you know, in the same way that drag is more than just dressing up like a guy dressing up as a woman. Like, it's about art, it's about culture, it's about kink, it's about sex. Um, Kink's the same way. And this Folsom Fair... While it is growing and, and becoming a little more diverse, um, I like. Is there something wrong with people in shorts and in sandals? No, and or? so and um, and uh, Richard Walton just said that he's not fond of the onlookers, onlookers either. Mm-hmm. I'm of two minds of that because without the onlookers, they're not introduced to the kink. Because I've had so many boys who, and I call them um, the boys that run around with just the harness on and the shorts and. T, uh, <clears throat> tennis shoes. I call them harnies. Uh, so I saw lots and lots of harnies around. Can we edit that out? Was no, I'm not no, supposed to say can't. that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're naming them. It's, so. it's my thing. Um, and I don't mind them. Lots of other people say, oh, they're not real leather. They're not wearing boots. They're not. You know, it's their first foray into it. And um, if it makes them feel sexy and they're enjoying it, um, you know, next year they can... Leather is expensive. Next year they'll invest in boots and hopefully dress up a little more. But, flesh. <laughs> I like the term hearty. Um Thank you. Actually, Dan Savage came up with that one. Oh. He texted it to me. Thanks, Dan. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> you dropped this. What'd I drop? That name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've already used that joke. Um, I like to call them the S&M crowd. Uh, the stand-in model. Oh. Funny. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I'm totally, right. and that's why I'm of two mindsets of it because you know, uh, so many boys. That's where they get their start because it's the first time they saw it. Mm-hmm. And we have to remember the younger generations coming up. They don't know. I'm old guard. The protocol that goes with some of these events. Um, but and I, I do think that that's true. But I think that calling them harnies or even joking you know stand and model like for them that is their gateway to a a fetish fair and an event like that if we shun them and we make them feel bad for not being in real leather right like that chases away a new crowd of people that might get into the community and i get that but unfortunately the old crowd of people no longer have a space there um used to uh leather and the bluff guys and everyone used to be able to go to the backyard of stompers and just hang out smoking cigars and in their boots and now it's kind of a safe space for them Mm -hmm. because it was the real leather guys having a space yeah stompers is gone now so they don't really have a space anymore to go and eat the eagles overrun with Harneys and and carnival folk and and so the the, the bluff and leather guys don't know where to go now. Would you say and it I, wasn't your monkeys and wasn't your circus? It was not my circus. It was a circus, but it was not my circus. <laughs> um, but and there's some comments in chat. What did you think of our Folsom versus Europe? Or Folsom Europe. So that I actually enjoyed more because I am a leather bluff 
guy who loves the leather protocol. And there wasn't one person on the street that was not in full leather or like latex formal. or fetish. And it was a big fair. Um, so, and then it, it doesn't just stop at the fair every single night. Berlin is such a nice, safe space for leather folk. They have about seven to ten leather shops that you can just go into all in a, like three block radius. Yeah, they're all super close to each other. <laughs> so they can, li- and the, there's plenty of leather bars. So it's, it's become, I think, a new central leather hub that I think Folsom is now kind of. I think I think people are choosing the, if they're into that lifestyle to go to Berlin, even though it's expensive. Um, but but uh, and we actually we were in Berlin, both of us together earlier in the year, and that was really fun. So I can only imagine the kind of the heightened sense that the European Folsom brings to it. Yeah. Um, but it was really fun. So, but don't don't if if that's your thing as well. Dory Alley, which is two months earlier than Folsom, is still a very heavy leather event. Um, so I know lots of like leather people weren't thrilled with the Folsom event this year or last year, um, but Dory is kind of the old Folsom. Yeah. So anyway, we had a really good time. Um, it was crazy hectic, um, but there was a few like pointers and, and questions that we had about this just from social media that I did want to touch base okay. on for Folsom. Hit me. No, with the questions. Oh. Don't have to care. write it down and then. Mm. <laughs> um, so we met a lot of people, some, <laughs> some people from YouTube, some people from Twitter, some people from Tumblr, and people would come up and they'd be very, very polite. Uh, but I do want to talk about how to approach people in general at Folsom. Oh, sure. That's a good one. Because... <laughs> Especially if their ass is hanging out or they're not fully clothed. Yes. So a lot of people have, like, stickers that say, like, ask first or just ask, like, implying that if you want a photo, to take a photo. Oh, but can I digress? Stickers. They give you a sticker at the beginning of these fairs. Do not put it on your leather because the glue will ruin the shine on your leather. Put it on your skin or jean or yeah. cotton. Yeah. Anyway, just a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. I, I go up to people all the time and peel their stickers off their leather harness or vest and say, no, don't do that. Yeah. Anyway. anyway um, so stickers. Ask first. Go ahead. Uh, also ask if you're going to touch someone. So, like, uh, there were at least two different instances of someone touching or groping or fondling like different parts of my own personal body. Well, that happens all the time because when you wear a jock shop, I'm not saying it sh- yeah. should, but no. And, and the 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 argument most people have when you confront them about that, well, you're dressed that way. Why right. don't you? It's like it's like the same slippery slope of oh, well, she was dressed that way. She wanted to get raped, you know. Yeah. Like there's, and, and again, I'm not like drawing a correlation between groping don't, and rape. Don't but, touch anyone unless you have permission. Sure, but yeah. the two instances where I like. Approach or where I like either grabbed the person's hand that was on my butt or like I confronted them about it, it was always a very negative response from them. Like, well, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah. Like, well, that's their you're being rude. Why are you to justify? Yeah. Them, but... And my question was usually like, oh, I'm sorry, do I do I know you? Yeah, like, I, know. I saw you do that. <laughs> and the, the I'm usually really good about it, but I do get a little offend like offended when someone's just groping me that I don't know. And that's when it happened when I didn't see. If if it happens in front of me, yeah. like it did to my boy at IML last year, I was like a pit bull towards the guy. I was like, don't. He he slapped Bit's ass, and I was like, no, uh, ooh, don't do that. And I've known some people to do that to you. You don't. Especially, don't hit anybody, uh, even if it's playful oh, smack. D- but. Don't even, like hit is just minor compared to yeah. like at uh, IML this last year. I was setting up the mistress booth oh. and helping someone to get some clothes and gear, and some drunk like guy that had never been to any sort of convention around kink or sex comes up behind me with a low grade taser, but still a taser, oh, yeah. and zaps my butt, and I turned around and I was. Trying to be as nice as possible, that but was I. M A L. Oh, M A L. Sorry, yeah. um, but I was livid, and it was I M L, not M A L. Are you sure? Yes, positive. But don't you know? Consent is key. If you think you know someone in the crowd, walk up to them, say hello, be polite. If if it's like wanting a picture, which <laughs> happens sometimes. <laughs> what? Adrian says, "Hey, Amp, can I touch your butt?" Goes a long way. 
<laughs> it does. <laughs> and most of the time, if someone asks if they can have a hug or touch or picture, I'm always going to say yes, so long as they're polite and they're not creepy about it. Sure. The other thing that I had happen to me this Folsom was mm -hmm. I was facing one way and I got tapped on the shoulder and I looked over my shoulder and this guy with the camera goes, turn around <laughs> so he could take my picture. <laughs> and I'm like... Okay. Hi. What's your name? <laughs> um, so I, I know uh, there's lots of cases where uh, you know us, so maybe you think we know you back, but it's always polite to um, say hi and start with your name. That helps us a lot uh, uh, because people will come up and just like, I know you. <laughs> I feel like this is just a bunch of Folsom horror stories, but no, there no, was no. there was one instance. I think my favorite part of Folsom that so the pic, similar to what you're saying, someone came up at the Eagle, which is our bar here, and this cute little guy in a harness and like jock strap, like he was all like Folsomed out, but he comes up and pretend to be me. Be nice. <laughs> pretend to be me. <laughs> Can I stick my butt out? I am so offended. <laughs> anyway, the guy comes up. So you're me. I'm you. Oh my god. Photo. I need a photo now. Okay. So he hands his camera to some random guy that's behind us, not even paying attention to him asking. And then he pulls his other friend out of nowhere into the photo. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Like, what's the photo for? And he's like, okay, three, two, one. And I smile. I'm like, nice. And, you know, taking the photo. And then he just sprints he off with his off. friend. And I'm just like, okay, photo raped now, I guess. And so the guy then came up to you after. So then the guy who took the photo, who I thought was friends with the guy who wanted the photo, comes up and is like, I don't know them, but um, <laughs> what what should should, should I, I know, know who you? you are? Am I am I a bad gay that I don't know who you are? And I kind of just See? laughed and I was like. It's a little, you don't, little celebrity. You don't need to know me. My my favorite was in Berlin. <laughs> Twice somebody came up to me in Berlin and goes, "You're Amstaddy," and I'm like, "Yes, I'm Amstaddy. That's who I am." You're so much more than that. I I don't know if I am. So much I think more. I'm just right, your right daddy now. Comments, right chat. Oh look, they say you're the best daddy ever. <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says Amstead. No. No. <laughs> hey. No. I'm, I'm no. No. <laughs> um, Who gives a bit better, better hug? Amp or Mr. Christopher? I think that's me. Yeah. Definitely daddy. Yeah. Um, there's that. questions. Uh, Tegan. Hi, Tegan. Asks if there's spaces for women at these kinds of events. Yes. Especially Folsom, San Francisco. It was half women. Yeah. So at kink events <clears throat> that are generally very like male oriented like IML which is International Mr. Leather there's always spaces for women <coughs> sorry live coughs <laughs> um, I will say that with the caveat that there are going to be some guys who are jerks and assholes about you being there because this is their space International Mr. Leather it's in the name Mr. but women are always welcome women are always behind the scenes helping with the event helping to run the event organize, judge so women are always welcome. Especially if you're in the community as well. That helps Yes. A lot. But if you're new to the community, just come into those kinds of events and just be very open-minded, be very courteous, be very respectful, and hopefully, if the people are worth actually you know, getting to know, they will be respectful back. And going back to the touching, just because you're a woman doesn't mean you get to touch a guy's ass or grab their crotch because they have a big bulge and it's titillating to you. You wouldn't... you you'd arrest us if we did the same to you so. yeah so don't yeah don't treat gay guys like straight girls get treated by straight men exactly yeah see you say things so much better than me <laughs> <laughs> um I... so uh otherwise fulsome is really fun Anything i had else? a great any time. other stories any I other horror a... stories <laughs> i had a great time i had a great time watching people um uh, and uh, the other thing is so many people from out of town that you don't get to see very often come in for it um, then there's a whole nother culture at night which are the dance parties and there's probably about 10 to 15 of those and so you kind of lose track of people because there's no way you can do all those events um, but I, I, I love catching up with the people that I only see at these events yeah you see everyone there yes. everyone's talking about your nipple 
Oh, and how sorry. it's out. Sorry. <laughs> Way to get us demonetized <laughs> twice. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Oops. Nip slip. Tally says hi. Hi, Tally. I was just editing your porn scene the other day for Mr. S. Oh, oh, Tally. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> um, no, he's just people reading comments. Mm. Um, so, we're about halfway through here. Was there anything else you want to say about Folsom Europe? or mm, No, you just I, had a good time. I had a good time. We hope to see you guys next year if yep. you come to Folsom. Um, but let's go ahead and segue into kind of a Q&A section okay. um, where we take questions. This can be the, the viewer question hour. Um, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll kind of just talk about whatever you guys want to. Which ACM? Mr. Christopher knows it. I shared your screen on HCM. I don't know what that means. Hot Cigar Man. Got it. Oh. Thanks, Doss. I appreciate <laughs> it. solved that one. <laughs> Hi, JJ. Um, oh, Mario missed you. Um, so, yes, leave some questions here of things you want to talk about. If not, we can just also make topics. Um, the comments don't work. Is vegan leather still considered as good as non-vegan leather? I don't know no. what that is, so I don't know if that's even a thing. <clears throat> oh, what does Daddy's armpit smell right now? Actually, I got a comment before we start. They're great. They're great. The big's gonna love them. Mm, oh, see him later, but mm. not right now. The puppy doesn't love it so much. Here, smell that. No, no, you're good. You're good. Let's just go down. <laughs> I'm sweating too. These lights. You're so nervous. Um, <laughs> let's see. What's Teresa asks? What's the biggest struggle with kink or the kink community? The biggest struggle? Yeah. That's really broad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't call our viewers names. No. Um, I think the biggest struggle with the leather community right now is having places to congregate. That's why these events are so big now, MAL and IML and everything, mm -hmm. because everyone just, it's become a circuit almost. Everyone waits for two months to go to the biggest leather bar in the country um, because their hometowns don't have one. And it's unfortunate that we don't have those spaces like we used to, like the Eagle and stuff that are just leather and fetish venues because they can't survive. Gentrification? I don't know if or, it's, I think it's a combination of things. I think it yeah. may be gentrification, but also apps. It's so much easier to get the sex that you want now because everyone's got a menu of what they are into and you can just pull it up on your phone and go get it. You don't have to waste three hours at a bar drinking and cruising the guy in the corner to get him home to find he's dull. So. Is that sorry. personal? <laughs> it seems to get, it's got a little real more efficient. Apps are more efficient than going to the bar. It's but true. unfortunately, it's true. the bars are socialization and community. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to feel part of a community on an app. I think that's our biggest struggle. Um, here in San Francisco and New York and other places, there are larger communities that do events all the time, so you just kind of have to look those up. But in the s smaller towns, I don't think there are as many, which yeah. has always been the case. But. I think that's a good answer. Um, next question. Let's see. Someone says you're making it difficult with your pits. Um, <laughs> stop and kill pit pits. <laughs> what are your guys' relationship? Like, obviously you guys are close, but are you in a romantic relationship together? Open relationship asks Ivana. Ivana, yes. Uh, we're pretty public about what our relationship is. Uh, the pup and I have a daddy-puppy relationship. It's very loving. It's very romantic. Um, he is open to date other people that he would like, but he doesn't do that very often. And that's probably because my pit smells so good. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> why I enjoy But you. we do have a large poly family with uh, other people in it, and we um, all communicate well with each other so that um, everything goes as smoothly as possible. Yes? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it is very romantic. We had a date night last night. Yeah. We went and saw... We, we saw... Um, what did we think? We saw Kingsman. Kingsman 2 is the most ridiculous over-the-top movie work. I've ever seen, but it was really fun. 
But well, don't give spoilers away. Um, if you like the first the one, shh, no, no spoilers. Elton John's in it. <laughs> Elton John was in it and kind of stole Those the show a little bit. Hilarious cameo. Funny. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Um, Amp, what got you into puns, Seamus asks. Seamus, um, I, I, I'd say I was a pundit for them, I guess. Oh, God. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to give you something nice, but... <laughs> um, I think, well, just my own inspiration for doing YouTube stuff was always uh, creators like Grace Helbig and Hannah Hart and people that made fun with the content they did, not at the content that they did, Um and, and I feel like we've talked about this before, me and Bolt, uh, but it's a lot of just, there's so much content on YouTube, but there was not a channel that kind of uh, represented us. There was no representation for kinky people that made good content that was fun, approachable. Uh, all of it that existed, if anything, was a little darker, a little kind of off or creepy in a way. And so we just wanted to do something fun and creative and... The puns just came along with it because we enjoy jokes and our inspiration from all these different creators were just very, like, pun heavy. <laughs> and he knows it annoys me, so there's that. No! Um, so Chad Chad Bartholomew asks, what's the best app to use to get into a master-sir relationship or find like-minded people? And for me, that one's really easy. Uh, Recon, Recon, hands down, is probably the best app for that. It's got uh, segmented communities, <clears throat> but it's it's less of another like grinder or uh, app where it's just sup hey sup hey. Um, this is kinky people who put out a laundry list of their kinks and pictures of what they've done or what they do to others, um, and it's kind of you can suss out who's safe and sane based on the profile. Um, and we just did an interview for Recon. Uh, uh, let's not talk about that, because it's probably never going to see the light of day. Not our fault. <laughs> anyway. Um, but I, I, Next question. I, How I did you guys... I seriously can say Recon is the way to go. But anyway. <clears throat> uh, you can add that out. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. <laughs> um, let's see. Next question. Tom asks, love the collab with Ash. Are there any more of those on the horizon? Uh, not... The what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> so where are you looking? Um, we don't have any more collaborations on the horizon with anyone specifically. Oh, Ash. We kind of just do episodes on the fly, or we find people locally to talk about. Um, we'll be doing some more episodes with Bolt involved, obviously, uh, here in the near future. Ooh, that's a good question. Dave Johnson said, as a harney transitioning into proper leather besides boots, what else should I be saving up for? That's a great question. So what is the beginner like leather that so, you should have? I think or gear in general. Like the cheapest, easiest way that you're so if you get a pair of harness boots, a pair of leather pants that fit, so you might have to get them custom, white tank top, leather vest, you can go to any leather event and fit in. Yeah. You can also do it in tight blue jeans and a white tank top and a leather vest. Uh, or just tight blue jeans, tank top, and some sorts of accessories like this. Leather armbands and wristbands. If you're looking for something that's a little more affordable, uh, neoprene harnesses are, are probably the cheaper, cheaper harnesses out there. Uh, just a nice pair of fitted pants, like Daddy said, and some some nice boots of some kind. Boots are important. I yeah. I, I, I forgot my boots because I live in the country uh, for Folsom Week, and I had to do a demo on stage, and I wore my tennis shoes, and I was kind of mortified because I got called out a couple times. <laughs> you were just being sporty. It. You were being sporty. It's fine. It's and fine. the pup told me no one would notice. So I didn't why. say no one would notice. Uh, Next question. Mortify. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing boots right now, though. Oh, my goodness. Please don't. Really go. yeah, they, uh, they know. Yep, they uh, see. Okay. okay. Leg down. I, I You're going to hurt your knee. Okay. Ow. <laughs> Careful, please. Um, let's see. Love what you do. Very King oh. Positive. Thank you, Fraser. 
Um, Doran, where, Doran no. said, tell him to go to stuff events like Claw and do auctions to save money. Oh, sure. Or go to like leather swap meets. Those exist. That's good. I'm seeing a few people asking where Bolt is. Um, Bolt's obviously not here. <laughs> He's in Seattle. Um, so we're in San Francisco where I live now. Bolt is in Seattle. Uh, when I'm in Seattle, we collaborate. When he's here, we collaborate. Uh, otherwise, we do our own episodes throughout the week where we have other guests or we just have ourselves talking. Um, and, and Hund, I see you. And yes, the tennis shoes look good, but you're biased. So, And I thought you weren't watching. Okay, d- d- let's not have a fight with the people in chat, please. <laughs> it's Hunt. <laughs> um... This is my bedroom. Uh, Langux asks, is that your bedroom? So neat. Uh, yes, this is my bedroom that is clean at the moment. Um, let's see. PJ says hi. Hi, PJ. Tally's still here. Eric's here. He is Justin well. says, Christopher is a perfect daddy. Large priority. Property. In, well, sorry, large property in the country, allowing you to dom people in and out. True. Hmm. Huh. Oh, okay, here's a good one. Tom asks, Daddy, are you ever going to write a memoir? Oh, my gosh. I hate writing, but I have so much to tell. So if I could dictate it, um, pun intended. Oh. See? Are you going to call it Memoirs of a Gay Sh... I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. No, but I do want to write a book about polyamory and, and, and the difference in dom-sub relationships and polyamory. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to call it polydom. No one take that. TM. Well, you just told the internet. I just, shh. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> I can't edit that. We're live. <laughs> but all I have is a title, and I don't write, so I, I'd need Race Bannon to write it for me, I think. Well, then who writes your Tumblr posts is a I question do. from Lingux. I do write them, but I don't think they're very good. I always think that my grammar is really bad, and I, I use run-in sentences all the time. I'm not a writer. Run-on right? run on sentences. Run-in. Run, no. Run-in. Well... Running. Got it. See? Bad grammar. Um, I mean, I I write pretty decent. How do your families feel about being kinky? Um, do you want to start that one? Sure. Uh, uh, my family... Who asked that? Give them credit. Oh, sorry. Uh, David. I cannot pronounce your na- last name. David asked. David asks. <laughs> uh, my family has been very accepting of me being gay. So I didn't tell them about the kinky nature of it right off. But then I started directing porn, and my mother was a little titillated by that. And I've slowly introduced them to more and more sexual topics. And now they just know everything. But it's been a 20 year arc. Um, I wouldn't just throw it at your parents right away. Sometimes parents don't need to know about your sex life. They're already dealing with you being gay and whatever relationship you're in. Yeah. So um, I, I slowly brought them into it. And <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm still introducing them to things. I, my family, uh, while very open and liberal, uh, they don't know about everything in my life. And that's that's okay. Like you don't, Like Christopher said, you don't give them everything at, at the very beginning like you don't want to shock them so much that they're just like Dah. so mine they, they've met you yeah my, my mom has met you <laughs> adrian's asking did it feel like a second coming out yeah which that's how i describe it. It, it it really is you have to be comfortable with your kink um in order for you to present it in a way that other people are comfortable with it yeah and so for me my <clears throat> parents know i'm gay um i grew up catholic so I came out to them forever ago to tell them that I'm done going to church and that's just not my thing. Uh, but my family's still super supportive. They've always been really, really kind to any of my partners that I brought to like Christmas or other family gatherings. Um, so I'm not completely out as far as kinks, but I know how that conversation would go if they were to find any leather or rope or photos or even videos online. Um, because I think that what we do is kind of important and helps people... It wouldn't surprise your mom. ...to come out. Yeah, and I don't think my mom would be super surprised. She knows where I work. But again, you don't really want to give the details of your sex life to your parents any more than you want to know the details of their sex life. Correct? Correct. No, absolutely. Um, Let's see. I feel like there was a question in there that I was going to elaborate on, but uh, it is gone now. You might have. Am I talking over you? You no, told me not to no, do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> not bothered by it. I'm fine. It's fine. Uh, um, 
What else is there? So. <clears throat> Can you personally get into puppy headspace without wearing any gear? Yeah, absolutely. Does it all the time. That's the question. Done. This is not, what I it's do. not happening right now. I'm not. No, 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 no. You just scratch them behind the ears and, they, and look them in the eyes, give them a kiss, and you, you turn their little puppy dog eyes on, and it's very cute. <laughs> I feel like you're demeaning me right now. I'm not demeaning you. <laughs> I'm showing everyone how cute and adorable you are. You're cute and adorable. You're cute and adorable. You get one. Okay. <sighs> Who's a Doctor Who fan? That would be me. Um, yeah, there's a TARDIS right there. There's also... That's a TARDIS. Exactly. <laughs> I've also got my Mega Man cup here. I don't know if anyone noticed that. Um, if you move your head, my scotch is right behind it. <laughs> that's not a... No, no, go that That's way. not Doctor Who. Stop. No, Stop. go that Don't way. Do. There, so right there. Oops. Right there. Please <laughs> give Graydon a shout out. Hello, Graydon. That's not a question. Um, any other questions around King Folsom? You did notice the cup. What is the common ratio you've experienced, you would say, of actual sex play, kink scene play, or just instruction? W I don't understand. I don't know what WRT means. The fact that it's subjective, everyone just wants to have a good time. What is the common ratio you've experienced, you would say, of actual sex? Can you rephrase that uh, question? Next real question. Real? Sorry, it's <laughs> too much. Uh... What else? Who's a what's a Whovian? Whovian. Oh, Whovian. It's a Doctor Who fan. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Teaching daddy so many things. Oh, God. It's like a whole other language. <laughs> uh, Tyler asks, "What things can you do at Folsom?" Folsom is it's a fair, so it's like a it's it's literally like a carnival. There's food. It's free to go to. You can give them a donation. Um, we have a video on Folsom if you want to watch that in our playlists. Uh, but Folsom is just kind of it's a, a big... lot of drinking, socializing, wandering around, and yeah. looking at booths. And all the booths there are either kink related or kink like porn related, sex positive, sex toys, sex positive. There's an ABDL booth. There's puppies. There's leather. There's poly. There's all sorts of things. Um, Chad asks, "What advice would you give to someone who is very new to the kink community?" and wants to get into Master Sir, Puppy Play, uh, I, I would ask what advice would you give someone new and not constrict it to just Puppy Play? Um, what, do you, what would you give? One, one pointer to someone new to the community. <clears throat> new to the community in looking for a partner or just wanting no, no. to be part of the community? Yeah, that's, look, look, uh, that's it. Wanting to be part of the community. Wanting to be part of the community? No, no, they're new to the community, ready to go. That's all you get, go. Ah! Um, well, do your research. Find out what part of the community you want to be part of, uh, what your fetishes and interests are, um, and then look. I don't look at where you live and see what events are out there. I mean, the internet's an amazing place. Uh, if you're just looking for a partner or people to play with, I say go back to Recon and look. Yeah, for for new kinksters, I always say um, be open to new things uh don't act like you know everything because you don't observe yeah go out and observe first uh don't pretend you know what you're doing before you enter and into take it. your time take your time because people that rush into it or get into a collar too quickly it, it doesn't generally end well uh and you don't know everything so you need to experience and kind of, you need to to fall a few times before you get back up and you have a successful relationship Doran asked, do either of you have anything in the leather archives? And I do. I, I had a whole uh, business called Masta Entertainment, and so all of those catalogs are in the leather archives now. People don't know what that is. A leather archives is a <laughs> museum of leather, basically, in Chicago. It's a, it's a uh, physical location. You can go in and take a look, and it just has the history of leather over the past. 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, all the drummer magazines, which was the magazine Kingsters used to read, um, up to videotapes that you probably will never find again because they were never replaced from VHS, mm -hmm. my era. I'd actually like to do a video with them. And I, I have their contact. We just we need to be in Chicago. We're we, going to be in Chicago in, like, I know, a few I know. weeks. <laughs> I never have time. I'll, I'll set that up. 
Oh, and I have their contact. Well, we'll talk. Okay. So there might be a video on the leather archive soon. But it's he a, never tells me anything. It's a source of. I could totally I text everything. <laughs> I, I, I rarely you. listen. You didn't. You didn't. <laughs> um. So there was a question. Uh, not really a question, but it, it segues into the next chunk of uh, ed, er, the video here. Uh, would love to see more behind the scenes blooper reel videos. Uh, where, like, where is that content? Patreon. Yes. So the this uh, I have a video that is coming out tonight uh, on Patreon for any of our patrons. What um, is Patreon? Explain. Yeah, yeah. So Patreon. So let's step back a second. So our channel is what's a safe word? Welcome. Hi. <laughs> uh, we do kink and sex related educational videos with tons of sexy people that are super awesome, but uh, YouTube doesn't like that and won't pay you for it. I mean, and so when we first started, we would put ads or like little ads in the side on all of our videos. And within the last year, year and a half, we've slowly seen these little like yellow marks on all of our videos, meaning that our video has been demonetized. Which he says a lot. Have you ever heard him say demonetized? <laughs> That's what it means. It's like, we're not getting paid for this anymore. <laughs> so last year, almost a year to the day, we started Patreon for people to donate. We didn't expect any money, but people donated. And we've been doing our best to give extra content, to give feedback, to get safe words, and to get ideas for episodes from people on there. Um, honestly, I don't think we've been the best at it uh, because we've missed some months where we've asked questions and and all of that. But, yeah, but you guys are getting a lot better. Yeah. And um, people know your resources are limited. I mean, you're, you're spending 15 hours a week just yeah. editing the show sometimes. And to, to be honest, like, editing a video takes anywhere from an hour to two hours, depending on where it's at and who the, the guest 15, is. I 15, but... Hour to two hours. <laughs> then there's taking everything down, putting it on the, the, like, my editing process is, like, anywhere from three to five hours, depending on the video. And then it's posting it, making an icon. So it's it's a really difficult process. At the very minimum, it might be a six-hour process. At the very most, it could be ten if it's a really complicated video. And that's every week. So the people that give to our Patreon, that money is used to help fund like our website, help buy equipment, help Got pay for website stuff. You were, yeah. Help like we, just get like just microphones microphone. and video, like all and the outpouring has been great, so thank you guys for doing that, because that really helps. And so thank you to people on Patreon. If you want to be a patron, it's cheap, easy, you don't have to even give that much. I think it's like a $3 minimum to see extra videos like bloopers. But if you are giving more, we do have some surprises for patrons coming up. And also update your addresses. We do have... Oh, you can't see shit. Shh, don't YouTube, you can't swear. Eh. Reflective. We have these guys that are going out this week to our Patreons. And these are fully enamel, nice metal pins that you can put on bags or backpacks or vests or anything like that. Kind of looks like Shazam. Do you remember it's that? It's like a What's the Safe Word logo. I know. Shazam. So, People patrons, my age will know. if you want to get those, they'll be coming your way for patrons. If you'd like to get those yourself, um, they'll probably be up in our store soon. Uh, and. There's a good one. Doss asks, does Amp smoke cigars too? We're out of the Q&A section. Oh, are we done? <laughs> <laughs> also, wait, there's more. Where's my backpack? I'll answer your question anyway. Well, he's not looking. Answer your question, yeah. Doss, he does not. And he, he hates being downwind of me when I am. But we work around it. I just go upwind. Keep answering so. this question. Actually, wait. I'm downwind. Wait. Which side does he have to be on? Which Don't side are you? Don't confuse yourself, Daddy. <laughs> what are you doing? Don't worry about it. So, I have to put him upwind. I'll be downwind. And then he doesn't. But sometimes I get those confused. Obviously. Thank you for that, Daddy. That was a wonderful question <laughs> answered there. Also to Patreon donators, like, you'll be getting things soon. Ooh, these shirts just came in. Yes, and these shirts... I haven't even tried mine on yet. These shirts will be available for people, too. Uh, if you're on Patreon, though, you'll be getting a special message on how to order these if you didn't buy them, but some Patreons... I should have worn that today. Well, you didn't. Some Patreons will be getting these in the mail. So, fine. look forward to those. Fine. There's It's a it's a, it's a a full, like, lightning bolt here. I'll hold it so up. So are we segueing now to... They saw it already. Yeah. See? See? Yeah, we see it. Come on. <laughs> All right, next. 
Um, so bloopers are coming out. Okay. Pins. I'm just giving. This is our, our like section at the end where we update people on our lives. Gotcha. And okay. So that is a big update. Is Patreon's going to be much more involved? Um, it is a bolt. There's bolt. That's bolt. Bolt was right there. He's he's on the shirt. He's on the shirt. <laughs> Um, thank you. Yeah, the shirt is, there's actually some surprises on the shirt. Um, we're not going to tell you what those are, but there I is. Almost just did. Don't it's tell so them. You didn't say that. Don't tell them. It's a secret. And only people that everywhere. realize it and recognize it. But you'll, if you have a shirt, you'll, you'll see. Anyway. Um, so those will be up in the store somewhat soon for patrons. You guys will get the first kind of look at that, uh, to buy them. If you'd like to buy them, if not, that's totally fine. But if you'd like to become a Patreon today. Uh, we're going to be getting a lot more involved in asking them what they want to see next month. Yes. So, so there is a poll up right now. Do you know what the topics are? I do not. Yeah. So patrons are able to vote and let us know what episodes they want to see. Uh, some episodes include, or at least choices. These are not going to happen unless people say that they want it to happen. Uh, polyamory is one of them. Oh. Uh, pony play is one of them. Oh. Uh, some specific bondage ties. Who's talking about pony play? This is, you know, patrons, if you're on there, you get to huh. leave comments. We also take comments from patrons and use those for future episode ideas. Um, what else is on there? I think there's a puppy play was another topic if people want to see a puppy play video. So. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's patrons and there'll be lots more in the future. And our blooper videos are going to be going there first and foremost and primarily on Patreon because they're really funny and people that are giving us stuff I want to give back to. But episodes here on the main channel are always going to be free. Yes. And probably won't ever have ads just because that's what YouTube's decided. <laughs> um, other updates. What else is coming up? Mm, am I supposed to know this? No, this is just, okay. just a question about your life. I'm very pressured. <laughs> Was this something What's you... coming up? What's up in your life? <laughs> I supposed to know that. Um, what is coming up? MIR. We're going to yes. Um, Which stands for Mister International Rubber. Mid it. Oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Because oh, you, I said the wrong thing for claw. Right? Didn't you? Have to yeah. Anyway, 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 we're going to MIR. Uh, I'm going to be one of the judges there, which I'm so thankful for, and I'm really excited about. Thank you, MIR, for having me. Um, and I'm going to go with him. Yeah. We're, we're just going to go and For have fun. no reason except to have go fun. with him. Yeah. We have rubber. I have some custom stuff being made. It's going to be super fun. I know. I need, um, I need to stock up on rubber. If you're going, let us know. Tweet us. Let us know that you're going to be there, and we'll, we'll definitely say hello. I will not have as much free time as he will, but we'll I will go fun. by the Leather Archives and Museum. Oh, fun. Mm. That's true. We could try something. Uh, Robert just became a patron. Thank you, Robert. You Aww. will definitely be getting one of those shirts at that price and a pin. And I think I think one of them is a postcard with handwritten notes on it. So thank you. Um, I'll be updating the patron like rewards as well here soon. <laughs> Puff to go to said Mr. Christopher is going as Amp's daddy. Yes. Oh. That's what I, get. I should get that on her latex shirt. Amp's, Amp's daddy? daddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on. You're so much more than that. No, I like it. <laughs> I'm fine being Amp's daddy. <laughs> uh, MIR, where is it? Uh, Chicago. It's in Chicago. I don't know where. What's the host hotel? Do you know? I don't actually know off the top of my head. Okay. But they have a website, MIR, Mr. G International GTS Rubber. Or, is there? Yes. Google that shit. Uh, Luke A. How do I find a boyfriend? Oh, God. <laughs> really? Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. I thought that was a funny question. <laughs> we'll have an episode on that, I'm sure. Um, what else is coming up, though? We have, uh, of course, MAL and IML I'm, are coming up. But that's I'm going to out. Leather Palm Springs, which is October. It's always around Halloween, I mm -hmm. think, October 27th. So I'll be there with Hunt, I think. Nice. Nice. Um, what else? We'll be doing... So I guess um, just kind of to, to truncate and curtail this entire thing, uh, if you guys are interested in more live streams like this or even like this podcast style thing where we have topics and then we have a QA and a and then we kind of just talk about lives in general, mm -hmm. let us know here. Um, leave some likes, share the video, uh, tweet at us, and they should hopefully have our Twitters by now. Um, and we'll, we'll continue doing some Q&A after this, but I do want to just 
uh, put this near the end just to let people know that if you're interested in this, um, we'd love to do more of it. We'd love to do something. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, this is nice. It's actually this is how long it usually takes to record an episode because yeah, I, I no, screw up all the time. We, we would still be like halfway through the episode if this was an episode. <laughs> Um, but we'd love to do a Q&A. We could even do, like, sex advice episodes if people have specific sure. questions about their own sex lives or kinks. Um, We'd have to pre- preface it as we are not professionals. Oh, always. We just pretend to be. Well, we could have Dan on. I don't Is he a professional? I, I mean, I'd consider Dan a <laughs> professional sex advice giver. Yes. I wouldn't... I mean... <laughs> Dan Savage. I mean, not just some random guy named Dan. I just think of him as a stoner in a hood. <laughs> Stop. Be Love nice. you, Dan. Be nice. <laughs> so, um, if you'd like to become a patron to the Patreon, uh, it's in the... Um, it's in some of the descriptions. Uh, I will we'll go ahead... put a link below. Yeah, I'll if go you, ahead and put a link. If you like it, like it down below this isn't the end um, of an if episode if you want to leave a comment leave a comment down below see I did it finally I did it right you forgot to ask them to subscribe and subscribe if don't you don't forget to subscribe subscribe <laughs> uh, if you'd like the link to the Patreon I'm putting it right here in the chat uh, feel free to join us there I'm going to be updating a lot of it on there the next couple days, and I'll be putting the blooper video in there tonight. So if you guys like to see this blooper video, which honestly, I think it's absolutely hysterical. Obsession. Yeah, there, there's obsession-related you, things. You'll get that if you see it. Obsession. You, you Yeah, you'll get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do we have a P.O. box to send gifts and stuff to? We don't. I've always thought about opening one, but I... I have an Amazon wish list. Oh my god, that's not the same thing. <laughs> this is not about you. Why? It should always be about me. Um, we might open one in the future. If we do, I'll of course tweet about it and we'll put it in like the end screen of a video or something. So just watch our videos and, and follow us on everything. I think peel boxes are fun, but I just don't want to I don't want to expect things from people because it, it just it's douchey to expect people to buy you things with without what? No. Oh, oh. Um, unless you have an Amazon wish list, and Amazon wish lists are the perfect way to ask people for things. And for the record, you set up my Amazon wish list and put all your shit on it, and people keep buying you things. Okay, okay. I keep wait, getting me, these me, small little me, jumpers. Me, I'm like, that doesn't fit me. Let me just say, who requested real quick? that? No, no, let me tell the story. So, <laughs> Daddy wanted to set up an Amazon wish list for his birthday on for his Tumblr, like to share with people because yes. they were asking how they could give him a birthday gift and so i helped him set it up and i said oh can i put like one or two things on there one or two right for us or for myself for us <laughs> mostly for myself yeah. um but things that you would enjoy and so then wait, that's wait, the, wait, all wait, that anyone wait, wait, saw wait, wait. that's all they bought <laughs> and so then the first two items of course that were bought off the wish list were the things that i put on there for myself funny that <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a compression shirt. It was my, like, Vegeta uh, compression whatever. shirt. Whatever. And, oh, and uh, a Groot uh, pop figurine, so. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> um, And, of course, I, I use Amazon wish lists on my birthday, too, but only on my birthday. I don't... Because you don't want to be douchey like me? I didn't say huh. that you were a douche. <laughs> what do you all think? <laughs> I love having I, I love having support. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> yes, and thank you again for people who did buy stuff on my birthday. I really did appreciate that. I got I got that Pokemon hat. I got uh, the ABCs of LGBT by Ash Hardell, appropriate. Um, and I also got the pop figurine of Eleven from Stranger Things. It was so cute. Um, so, is there anything else that you want to update on or talk about? I don't think so. Yeah. If you guys have any ideas for future live stream podcasty kind of episodes, uh, you can leave them in the comments on this after the fact. You can tweet at us and just do hashtag, you, what can I have? What's live, W-A-T-T-S-L-I-V-E, um, and we'll be able to see those. Does that sound? Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, do you guys have any last minute questions or comments? If you guys enjoy this, just let us know in the comments here. Um, See, Patricia says it's fun to buy people gifts. I think it's very sweet. I love you, Patricia. I, I, I love when people buy me things. I just feel bad because I, I don't want people to have to spend their money on me. <laughs> do you always wear that color or do you wear different colors? 
Me? Yes. Um, this is... Not me. <laughs> what do you mean, not you? That's not a collar. You're wearing... Oh, anyway. This is my <laughs> my, my, my current collar. My current all-time collar. I never take it off. Um, it's actually worn really well, considering this is like a leather band. Yeah, we need to check that that lock's not rusting. The lock's sure. fine. I, I, I fix the lock every once in a while to make sure that it's still good, and I clean it. He's had three versions of this collar? Let's see. Actually, this Over is my time? drawer. This is my drawer of collars. I actually started with this collar years ago. This is just a metal chain collar, uh, and you can put a tiny little lo padlock there. But that wasn't me. No, this was not you. This is well, well so before you. So nobody cares. <laughs> Let me just go through the collars that are mine. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I have this nice, fun play collar. It's a rope collar. I didn't wear it at all times, just during play. That was from you. Um, Finally. My cable collar, my recon collar, I think you actually have. Yes. And that's the cable one, like a bike chain. Um, and and then, then the other one you framed. Yes, the other one I framed and gave to you as a gift. That was my Christmas gift last year. It was really pretty. And, and then, then you had that chain one. This was the last one that I've worn, mm -hmm. which came with this lock. And so I just transferred the lock onto this nice uh, leather band from Tribal Sun. Yeah. And Tribal he does Sun great work. Does, he does great work. But he won't make this unless you do it in person. Yes, but he's at all the street fairs and don't other tell him, events. Don't, no, no, no. You can't. You can't have it. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Find you, and I'll give you a free pin. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, how much time do you have left, Daddy? I'm. I'm not going anywhere. So. That was a, it was a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to get rid of it? No, I'm kidding. Um, we'll take a lot. How about three or four more questions? Yeah. And then we'll close Go it out. Go right. good with that. Okay. So. Can I have some of your Red Bull, though? Yeah. You can always have some of my stuff. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. This is brand new, by the way. The cup? No, I've always had the cup. Brand new behavior. You're so cute today. <laughs> Are you plugging Ikea? No, this is not from Ikea. Oh. It looks like it looks like it's a uh, fan gamer. They make really cool nerd-related stuff. Um, Shazam, says Tyler. I don't... Shazam! Thank you! Tyler gets it. What? You get me. What? <laughs> I said Shazam earlier because of the pin. Thank oh, you, Tyler. Oh, got it. This is an old 70s show. 80s. Uh, Sean asks, what's the minimum age for IML? I don't think. It, oh, oh, uh, like legal age. Uh, legal age. Yeah. I want to say probably like eighteen. Probably eighteen on in the vendor market, but I don't know. Daddy, cover your sh oh, your sorry. nipple keeps. You're offending people. Sorry. Um, I told you I should have worn the other shirt. Uh, I think though, uh, safe bet is twenty one in the lobby bar areas. But, yeah. Um, Anywhere there's alcohol, twenty one. But I don't. I th I guess it's up to the bartenders to card, so um, they could be in the lobby without. They anything. just can't be in a bar area with alcohol. So eighteen right. and up for the most part. Yes. What are our top three fetishes? Asks Adrian B nineteen ninety one. Um, we both share the same top one, which is rope and yeah, bondage. Bondage, rope. I would say bondage because bondage also includes leather bondage. Okay, I do love rope, I'll but I will. I will say bondage as as the one. So we fetish. like rope and bondage. Yeah. Yes. What's your second? Nipples. Okay, my second would probably be puppies. Puppy play. Yes. And your third? Uh, role play. I like master slave. Daddy boy, I'd say daddy daddies. puppy. So daddy or da no. daddy is gen like just the overarching daddy. So that includes daddy role play. That includes daddy. That includes daddies. Daddies. Yeah. <laughs> smell daddy. Mmm. <laughs> Someone was asking earlier, "Well, you smelled Dirk's pit in that one episode?" And I was like, "Yes, I did." Um, but smelling for me is not the same. I have awful sinuses. P people don't know he actually doesn't smell. I can't really smell very well. <laughs> which is actually good for me because I smell a lot. No. No, I do. I, I mean, yes. But people but like it. Good smell. You're not so much. That's a trap. Um, <laughs> it worked. Oh, I like that question. Arthur 1898. You guys all have birth names. And it's very odd. Uh, any favorite podcast? Don't birth name shame them. It's a thing. I'm going to make it a thing. Okay. What did um, he ask? 
He asks any favorite podcasts that you like to listen to and would recommend. Uh, I listen to Dan Savage. Uh, 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 I can't think of the name of it. Right Savage now. Love. Savage Love. Thank you. <laughs> like I know it's not the Dan Savage show. <laughs> Stranger. Uh, I listen to that one Jeez. frequently. What do you listen to? Well, I was just—I was getting to my look. podcast. Well, I could name them all, but I was just going to name the ones that I'm listening to this last week. Okay. Uh, I listen to the H3 podcast. I listen to Sexplanations, which is uh, Dr. Lindsay Doe, who has a channel on here. I definitely recommend it. I listen to um, what have I been listening to? Risk, which is like a, a storytelling sort of thing. It's like stand-up comedians and other people that just have experiences tell really kind of scary stories sometimes. Yeah, you've made me listen to that. It, sorry. Uh, I listen to Bizarre States, which is a Nerdist podcast. <clears throat> I listen to Nerdist, Cycle Babble, which is Tyler Oakley's uh, Not Too Deep by Grace Helbig. And, ooh, Throwing Shade. I've been listening to a lot of that, which is uh, Aaron Gibson and Brian Selfie. They talk about, like, <clears throat> feminist, gay... LGBT plus related cultural issues of the week. They're sure. hilarious. Um, okay. uh, Dimitri is saying, Christopher, I've been trying to get advice via Tumblr for a while. Please. Uh, Don't I do... message Christopher on Tumblr. No, no. <laughs> I get lots of questions on Tumblr, and like I said before, I don't feel I'm a good writer. And like even the puppy, when he text messages me, I always respond with two or three words. And yeah, the, the, the everyone else in the family, the pig, the boy, then it's like walls of text, and I reply with a sentence. So if it's an in-depth question. I might not get to it because A, I don't have the time, and B, I don't have the writing skills, I think, necessary for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not because I don't want to answer you, it's just a time thing. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and along the same lines, when it comes to people on social media or YouTube, they have so many different social medias that they're trying to keep up with, yeah. but you have to keep in mind a lot of them have other jobs. Like, yeah. I have a full-time job during the week, so... I try to get back and I try to answer all the questions I get on Tumblr or Twitter. Yeah, and then we have about 20 avenues of between recon profiles, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, did it, and that we're and constantly answering. Like, so sometimes you yeah. read it thinking you're going to get back to it too. Yeah. And then you're like, you get distracted because you're answering someone else and then it just falls down the list and you forget about it. Um, so that happens a lot, just yeah. so you know. It's not purposely not ignoring you, it's just, it's a lot sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there's some people saying they're leaving, so they're saying bye, bye, wear and wolf, wary wolf. Um, bye, guys. Uh, if, you, if you're leaving now, I, thank you for joining us. Um, Sewers of pa Paris, Matt Baum. Where's Matt Baum? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it, yes. It, it, Matt Baum. May is Sorry. listening to Sewers of Paris by Matt Baum. Yeah, no, I've been on that podcast. I know. That's Matt. Yeah, That's our I was, friend Matt Baum. It. Yeah, yeah. I listen to Matt Baum's every once in a while as well. I have not less, listened to it this week, but he does a wonderful like different guests from the community, be it drag queens or porn stars or even Bruce Valanche was on there, I believe, one time. Sure. He, uh, but he does lots of really fun, different introspective looks into people's lives. Justin Cox says, it's actually very impressive that you have a full-time job and can do YouTube and have time for kink. That's funny because <laughs> over Folsom weekend, we barely, I don't, did we, we have sex. time for sex? We, we had like full Full on sex once. Once we had like in full like other like flirting days. and playing around. We're really just, pretty you get easy. you're out there and you get so exhausted. You come home. Actually, that's the one thing we lose time on is actual sex with each other. <laughs> so. Yeah, but we make it work. Yeah, we made up for it last night. Yeah, we did. We made a nice night. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the <clears throat> time commitments. I don't sleep much. No, he doesn't. But I do make it to the gym sometimes. Mm. Like, so that's why I feel, I, I'm just, I have, an, like, a self-motivated, like, I feel bad when I'm not able to do Patreon and Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook and YouTube and, like, all of these things. And also my full-time job. <laughs> it's a lot. But now it sounds like we're complaining. No, We no, do no. love what we're I'm doing. I'm saying I feel bad when I can't give enough, like, yeah, I when I can't post everywhere every day all the time. So thank you guys for always being patient, and if we ever need a break from the show like this week, you know, we still got this up, and I hope that you enjoyed this, and this chat was fun. Um, this is fun. I enjoyed it. I did, too. Um, and we'll definitely, I think we'll do it in the future. I don't know how often, but maybe once a month we'll do a That's Friday cast. That's up to you cast. guys. Tell us how much you like it. Yeah. If you guys like it, let us know in the comments or on Twitter. 
It's good. I like reading the questions in real time. Yeah. Um, and also, it's it's nice to be able to answer them off the cuff without thinking them fully through. It's also very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I'm probably going to get into trouble. But um, I, I prefer that than all the thinking about it. I'm thinking knee, so I'm hard. knee jerk. Yeah. But. You're not a knee jerk. <laughs> Careful. You said it. Um, <laughs> so I think we've been on here a little over an hour now. Um, I think it is time for us to sign off. If you guys enjoyed this, though, let us know. Um, if you guys have any ideas or topics that you'd like an in-depth conversation like this, unedited, just kind of chatting back and forth, uh, send it our way on Tumblr or Twitter or any other social media, and I'll start kind of a spreadsheet or a list of stuff. Yep. And we will see you guys uh, next time on What's Live. Or What's we, Live. What should we call are, it? Are we doing the... What, what's up? What are we doing the buy? And whether you are in this live chat or coming to it after the fact, always have a safe word. Today's safe word, Daddy, is... Oh, God. This is my favorite I part. didn't think you were going to do this today. And you can't edit it out, too, so it's really Shazam! Ooh. <laughs> was that the one with Shaquille O'Neal? No. <laughs> I know, I know. That was that was intentional. That was intentional. Because the, the Mandela effect. Have you... You remember that one book about the, the bears? Like the kid's child book story series? It started with a B. The the Bear Berenstein Bears. Oh yeah, I know that one. What's it called? Berenstein Bears. Berenstein or Berenstein? Berenstein. Okay. See that's you, <laughs> you people that know about that, you know. Berenstein. Why? What? You just said Berenstein the first time. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Did I say Berenstein? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what? Anyway. <laughs> Are you confused now? I hate you so much right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you stay on downwind of me when I smoke a cigar from now on. Forever. Shazam! <laughs> you didn't do the safe word. I just did. Oh. That was the... See, he doesn't... Anyway. So, leave us some comments down below if you guys have any questions or ideas for next time. Tweet at us. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this with people if, if you enjoyed this. And uh, anything else to add, Daddy? No. We'll see you guys next time. What's the safe word? Bye! Bye! Okay, now you didn't do it very loud. Bye. Bye. <laughs> there you go. Is that good? That's good. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, if you guys have any other questions, I'll kind of be in chat for a few more minutes, but I am going to stop the stream so that we can go have sex. What? Yay.